Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is one of my personal builds. I built it probably three years ago. It started life as what was basically a BE100 Deluxe, um, but it was before the 100 came out, so it was kind of inspired and based on the BE50 Deluxe that was out at the time. It's built using a PCB, not one of mine. This was actually built using a PCB that I sourced from the UK, um, one that was being circulated out there for kind of you know, Friedman inspired uh, builds. And it was the first build that I built uh, myself using a printed circuit board based design, or, you know, PCB backbone for a tube amp. Up to that point, I'd only done kind of turret layouts and so on. And um, it was very transitional for me in terms of inspiring me to kind of move into my own PCB based designs. And this was a, a huge learning ground for me. Putting one of these together, a three channel lamp, I've got a whole bunch of relays in here controlling all sorts of things and I'll, I'll take you through what, what they do. Um, it's so, in its first iteration of life, it was a basically B100 uh, Deluxe. I say Deluxe because it's got kind of the power amp controls here. We've got uh, a thumb control, a response, and a presence. Right, um, you know, three pots for the power amp there. I then transitioned it into an SS100 kind of spec. Um, if you know anything about the you know the hundred watt Friedmans, you'll know that you know there's only a handful of components really that separate uh, the main flagship models in the lineup. And uh, it stayed as a as an SS spec for probably a year and a half. And just last week, um, and also during this week, um, I've converted this into a more traditional Jose style circuit. So. Um, which is, you know, clearly where the Friedman amps, you know, what they were inspired by, which is a gain stage in front of a plexi circuit, more or less, right? So this one um, does not have any diode clipping in it. Um, I don't think it needs it. I like the, you know, the openness of it. And what I've done over the last week is really kind of take the, um, I guess what I would call the Friedman polish out of the amp and kind of bring it back to a more traditional kind of martial raw kind of tone here. So for today's clip, what I wanted to go through is just some basic um, sounds out of this thing now and show you how I'm using MIDI. You know, so we've got the MIDI board available here. I'm using MIDI in this amp to control not just channels, but uh, a couple of other features as well to give you more variation or to give me more variation than just the three channels. And I am switching everything in the sense using um, a Fractal FM3, which I've got running in for cable method. So I'm running MIDI out of that into the MIDI. And on this thing, um, for today's video, um, what you've heard so far, I've got nothing running in front of the amp. And the only thing in the effects loop is a little bit of reverb. We are actually miking up through this uh, Marshall 4x12 cab behind me here. It's uh, an early 80s um, straight fronted cab and it's got first reissue greenbacks in it. So they're quite old, but definitely worn in. I've got an SM57 on one of the cones here and it's going straight into logic. So just a little bit about the amp. It's three channel, right? And I've set it up as a kind of like a green, a blue and a red. Um, it's kind of not surprising. A lot of uh, flagship amps have that, uh, use those colors to denote a clean, a you know first first gain channel and obviously the higher gain channel. So if I move over to scene one on my FM3 here, you can see it's already flipped across to the green channel. What we have here is a Fender uh, preamp, basically right into you know 100 watt Marshall power amp, and we've got a volume. I've got um, a treble and bass pot, and I've got a three way middle switch here, right mid switch. So I didn't have room. Obviously got more than enough knobs on this amp already. There was no room for a mid pot, right? So I did the old trick with the three-way switch. So we've got kind of in the middle as is, is if you had the mids on 10, and then a couple of other settings each way to kind of, you know, about, say, 1 p.m. and about 10 a.m. thereabouts. Three-way bright switch on the clean channel as well. So with the clean channel selected, uh, let's have a listen to how it sounds.
there courtesy of the axe. Okay, I'm gonna to move to the blue channel, which is obviously channel two, and I'm gonna demonstrate how I'm using the MIDI controller in this amp to give me two sounds out of uh, a single channel. What I've done here is I'm using a relay to switch between two uh, cathode resistor settings on the second gain stage, right? So I'll translate that, what that means is I get basically two gains. So I've got like a you know, lower mid gain um, sound, which is more kind of JCM 800-ish um, in its gain structure. And then in the second mode, um, more like a straight up, you know, Jose, where you've got the, uh, you know, two kind of hot gain stages cascading to one another. So this is the first mode of uh, the blue channel, more that kind of, as I said, you know, kind of lower gain, 800-ish style tone. <laughs> Okay, so moving to the second mode of the blue channel. And these modes can be replicated on the red channel as well because it does cascade through the same uh, the same tubes in the amp. So whatever I do on the blue, I can kind of do on the red. What the red channel is, is an extra gain stage in front of the blue. We'll get to that. So here is uh, the higher gain setting of the blue channel. So what the, you know, what the amp's done here, switching between the two modes, is uh, change the setup of the second gain stage right to a hotter setup, so we're getting more gain. And you can really feel that, right, or hear that when you um, when you get that kind of extra gain coming through. It really thickens up in the mid range. What we've got here is a very traditional uh, Jose mod with a post tone stack master and no diode clipping which, you know, having done a bit of research on uh, the Jose mod and listened to Dave Friedman um, and Peter Thorne and others talk about them, many were done like this. Right? Um, not all the Jose mods had Xena diodes uh, in them. I configured this to be what I imagined the Richard Fortas amp was set up like. So reading about that, listening to Pete Thorne's video on it a few times, right, um, listening to obviously Dave Friedman talk about that amp as well. This is configured pretty similar. I can't verify that all the values are the same, right? But what I do know is that I have configured this to pretty close to the original Jose spec. There is a schematic around on the internet taken from you know original mods that he did, and it's certainly set up with a post tone stack master volume and no diode clippers. So let's listen to it again. This is our kind of you know straight up. Uh, Jose mod. You'll see just on the settings here, should go through them. This is the master volume for the blue channel. I've got a midday uh, treble pot, right? About 1 pm, mids up at 1. This is bass, right? It's up at 3 pm. Um, these are the two games, right? So I have got a, uh, a bright cap on this uh, game pot here. So this would be like in a normal four, four hole plexi, this is like one of your, uh, your normal volumes. Right, or the volume on the treble channel, if you like. This game pot here is like the Jose game stage, right? So if you can imagine the mods you've seen in a Jose where you know you have a pot inserted into one of the inputs on the amp, that's what that is, right? So this game pot here cascades into this one. So with the bright cap on this uh, on this game here, I can kind of control how much of the low end and mid range is coming through. <laughs> it right up 
it, it, the bottoms, it, it's too much, right? So this is where you use the bright cap to EQ the amp. Bring that back, you'll still retain the kind of top end regression and it'll start to carve out some of that, that low and mid. <laughs> Moving to the first gain pot, right? So let's have a listen to the impact that it has, right? It is the, you know, the controlling the gain stage in front of the plexi. Right? Think of it that way. If you wind it right back, you're basically getting, you know, you can get this at unity gain, I guess, as if it wasn't even in the circuit. I mean, it's going to have an impact, but, um, when you do that, you're really just using the uh, you know the second gain, like your master volume or the volume, I should say, the channel volume on a normal plexi. sweet spot and the reason for that is because I don't want to run that blue channel channel 2 all the way up because I've got one more channel on the sand it's a three channel amp so I've got a red channel which as I mentioned just briefly brings in another gain stage in front um, of these two gain stages here um, the red channel the extra gain stage is fixed I can't control it on the amp but I've tuned it in to kind of give it just that extra bit of kick and you can hear when that comes in uh, what difference it makes to the sound of the sound. <laughs> Of this thing, we've got uh, an effects loop. Uh, we have got a global master volume. It has got um, a line out um, as well, right? So you can tap off off this and run it out to um, you know slave unit for a wet dry wet setup. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the clip, this is the third configuration um, that I have had this amp in. Um, my favourite so far, it's early days, I know it's probably honeymoon period, but I do love that the sound, the sound of this now. It's got uh, got a bit more of that raw martial aggression back into it, taking out some of the, uh, you know, let's call it the Friedman polish that uh, the Friedman amps have. Um, I'm going to use it this weekend in a band situation, so I'm really looking forward to um, seeing how that rolls, and I'm going to use it um, with the Fractal FM3, giving me a pretty flexible setup, right? So four key, key tones, I've got the clean channel, I've got two sounds on the blue, and I've got my red setup. So four scenes, and in each scene, you know, I've obviously got the ability to bring in um, effects, you know, drives and phases and so on, on the fractal in front of the amp, and also through uh, the effects loop. I think what we'll do now for the second part of the clip is I'll give you a glimpse into what I've done circuit-wise uh, in this thing, right? We'll reference it back to the original Jose 
design, the one that's um, you know, uh, shared all over the internet, um, and I'll use that uh, as a reference um, to talk about what I've done to this, particularly as it relates to how you might use some of those ideas if you're thinking about um, trying to get some more aggression and good old, you know, good old martial bite um, out of the Friedman that you might own today. Cheers. All right, so what I thought would be useful is to step through um, the guts of the Jose mod using this schematic here, right? So this is uh, was drawn, I think, in 2006 or thereabouts. And I don't know who did it, but if you search through any of the kind of, you know, tube amp DIY forums and so on, you, you'll find this easily. Um, so I'm not... Certainly not uh, letting go any company secrets here. This has been published and available uh, in the public domain for a long, long time. It is traced back from an actual Jose modded uh, Marshall 2203, as you can see here, right? And I just want to focus on the treble channel um, because that's what I've implemented, all right? And a lot of the Jose uh, derivatives are really based around just implementing the Jose mods to the treble channel of the Plexi, right? In a traditional Jose, you obviously do have the normal channel of the Plexi still available and you can kind of blend that in. Um, but, you know, in my amp that we just demoed, uh, I don't have that, right? It's just the treble channel implementation. So this is the pathway on the top. now. I'm going to try and simplify this because there's quite a lot going on in this diagram and it's and the way it's drawn is perhaps a little bit complicated. Um, but essentially what's happening here, right, is you, your guitar signal is coming in here, okay, and when this uh, switch, right, so this would be a, a push-pull pot um, or, you know, a, a push-pull arrangement on the front of the amp, switching between uh, the two modes, right, either the Ho Jose gain stage or not, and when the Jose gain stage is in place, your guitar signal is coming down here into the grid of this first triode, right? So this is kind of a V1 tube, two triodes each side. So you're coming into the grid here. It's a 2K7 and a 0.68 microfarad cathode to ground, all right? And on the plates, this is actually incorrect. There's a lot of discussion on this in the forums and there's photographic evidence to suggest that the way Jose did it was to tap 100K off. Remember, so he would add this as a whole new tube into a, into a Marshall, which would have, you know, vase inverter, third gain stage cathode follower, here's V1, and then he'd add the new tube at the beginning here, right? So he would tap off the plate supply of the existing V1 with a single 100K and then it would split out, split out to 100K for each side, the treble channel and the normal channel. So you can kind of think of this as like a 200K uh, plate load resistor. Okay, so off that, off the anode, right, here's our coupling cap through a one meg gain pot to ground, right? So that's our first gain pot. And you can see here that we've got kind of a, a 268k resistor arrangement. So coming out of that gain pot, um, your signal, forget about this loop, right? That's an insert loop. So if that's, you know, if there's nothing plugged in, your signal will just pass straight through. And here we go into the grid of the second gain stage. Okay. So when the switch is set so that the Jose gain stage is in place, the 68k resistor here is set to ground. Is our ground, and then this 68k resistor here acts as the grid resistor for this gain stage. So second gain stage now, and here we are. This is now where the a traditional Marshall plexi would start, 2k7 and 0.68 on the cathode to ground, normal 100k plates. Okay, through another coupling capacitor, um, and um, and through what is now the normal treble gain pot, or the treble volume pot, I should say, on a normal four-hole plexi, right? And here's our bright cap. This is a massive 
5,000 picofarad, right, or 5 nanofarad. Now, in, you know, one of the good discussion points about vintage marshals is, you know, what what what's the bright cap value anywhere between 470 picofarad all the way up to 5,000? Um, obviously, the higher you go, the brighter um, that will be. And then into our normal 470K, uh, you know, and 470K resistor and 470 picofarad um, cap here, mixing resistors off the two both sides into the third gain stage, simple 820R resistor, cathode follower, and so on, right? So with that in mind, I'm going to step to this diagram, which is uh, how I've implemented it in the amp that we just went through, right? So this is the blue channel, if you like, so the, you know, the kind of normal Jose. I haven't drawn in the extra gain stage at the front for the red. Let's focus on the blue here. And hopefully in this diagram here, it's set out with a little bit more clarity. And these are, are the exact values, actually, that I've used uh, in the amp, right? So um, rather than the 200s, I've got 150 and 100 here. I've got a separate video if you want to understand what uh, changing the plate resistor uh, actually does to a gain stage. So I looked that up. Hopefully that will help explain it. 2.7K, 0.68 microfarad to ground here on the cathode coupling cap. Right, here's our first gain pot, um, which you know is labelled gain 1 on the front of my amp. And 268Ks, I've got 100K here, right? So it's giving me a little bit more gain here at the grid of the second gain stage. You'll find that if you play with this value down to 68, you move it to 100, maybe, maybe try it higher. It'll, um, it'll really change the, not only the game, but the feel of the amp. So you can kind of get that into the, into the sweet spot that you prefer. Second gain stage, same cathode setup here. Back to our traditional 100K plate resistor through the coupling cap. And in my amp that we just demoed, I have got the big 4.7 nanofarad bright cap, right? I played with different values in here and tried to tune it to, you know, kind of a, 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 my own preferences. I started with, with 470 picofarad, I went to 1000, I went to 1500, I ended up with um, 4.7, just kept going higher and higher until I went, yeah, okay, that's probably enough. From here on in, it's pretty traditional. The difference here is we've got um, this bypass cap, another 0.68 microfarad on the third gain stage, which is, you know, Pretty common thing to do to a plexi to give it a bit more uh, a bit more oomph. Right, so move to the next one. This is what I want to demonstrate. What what I was doing, you know, on the blue channel, I had a couple of different variations of of gain, um, which I'm relay switching with the MIDI board. And what I'm doing is I'm changing what's going on here on the second cathode. Right, so um, much like you'd see in a kind of JCM eight hundred. Um, where you've got the you know the 10k second cathode, that's the low gain mode that I uh, I did demonstrate, um, and I've got if I go back to this diagram, I basically got um, you know some resistors and this uh, bypass cap all set on relays, and with the MIDI board I can ground the connections on these different variations that I've got set up to give me um, some different modes, and what I've got I've got the 10k. I've got 10k with that bypass cap in, which I didn't demonstrate on the video, but is actually a pretty killer tone. And then I've got that. So I've got three variations actually on the on this cathode setup here, and they all sound different. So you know, it's almost like a seven-channel amp if you want to think of it that way, because I've got the clean, and I've got three modes for blue and um, three modes for the red channel as well. Um, Okay, moving along, I want to talk now about what's going on in a BE channel. And I've been asked a few times, you know, in messages and so on, um, and also on our DIY Facebook group where there's always pretty healthy discussion going on about, about amps and mods and stuff um, as they relate to, you know, what I'm doing with Head First. This is a simplified version of uh, the brown eye. And by simplified, I just mean that, you know, I'm not showing all the you know, the HBE and the clean channels and all the rest of it. This is just a straight up um, 
BE circuit, you know, um, and it's been it's been you know varied a little bit over the over the journey, but um, you can see if you look at this, very similar to this first one that I drew, and as I said, this is what I implemented in my amp that we just demoed, but it's taken straight from that, yeah, pretty much, you know, a couple of different values, but it's pretty much bang on, and um, which is you know what we see in the BE, which is you know it's a killer, it's a killer circuit and it's a killer tone. Now, I often get asked, how do you, how do you kind of bring back a bit more martial aggression, in, uh, you know, in a, in a Friedman amp, and you'll see this in a lot of amps. It's not just Friedman that do this, right? A lot of manufacturers put a bunch of um, you know components into the circuit to reduce the bite and the top end. And there's three things in the circuit that I'll highlight um, that are either being added or taken out that achieve that, right, in terms of you know reducing the top end. The first thing are these, these um, plate capacitors here. Right. Here's another one here. 500 picofarad bypass cap right across this plate resistor. You need to think about the B plus line as being very similar to ground. I know it's not, right? Ground is at you know zero volts and this is you know probably 300 and something volts, whatever. But to AC, right, to an AC signal, which your guitar signal is, kind of the same. It doesn't make any difference, right? So if you have a cap like this that is bypassing where the AC signal is traveling and it's creating a pathway to the supply line here, it's like a low pass filter, right? It's dumping high end out, out of your audio signal and, and you know, letting it escape basically. That's kind of the way you think of it. So there's one here, very common. One here on the third gain stage. You'll see this in a lot of Friedman amps. As I said, a lot of others too, right? You know, Bogdan, the list goes on and on. Um, so the first thing you can do, if you've got an amp like this, and you know you really want to bring back some martial aggression. Just pull these out, solder them out. You can just pull one leg out of this of the of your circuit and see what you think, right? Um, the third thing is what's missing, and that's the bright cap. Okay, it's very rare to see a bright cap on a gain pot in a Friedman amp. Perhaps one of the most simple thing you could do if you've got first generation BE with a single gain pot, um, you could try putting a bright cap in here. It'll make a huge difference to the amp. Um, it'll, you know, it'll mean that you kind of can't turn the gain down and, and not end up with a really super bright amp. But if you just want to dial that in it, you know, that gain pot at like 2 p.m., let the bright cap do its work. It's a, it's a pretty killer mod. Um, I said with one gain pot because this last, schematic here I've got is really a kind of a um, you know again kind of setting out what the deluxe looks like so where you've got an amp you know the Friedman amps do this right where you've got uh, effectively two gain channels and this is how my amp was you know I said there were two generations of my my amp there that I just demoed before I settled on this current incarnation of it I had two gains. I got two gains on the front, and they were split like this. So this would be the gain pot for you know channel two. Let's call it BE, and this would be the gain pot for channel three, which was kind of HBE mode. Um, you can see that what I've what I've done to reconfigure my amp basically is you know rewire it so that this second gain pot, which would traditionally be used for HBE mode or the red channel on my amp. I wired it in here instead um, in a more traditional Jose setup, right? This is a relay and it would flick between these two channels based on whether you, you know, selected um, the blue channel or the red channel or you know, BE or HBE. Now, final thoughts here. You can add a bright cap. If you've got a two channel like this, you can add a bright cap to these things, but it's a bit, a bit problematic, right? And the reason it's problematic is because the way that these the switches 
Um, this is still in the circuit, this other gain pot. So um, if you put a bright cap in uh, on, let's say, this first gain pot, which is the BE channel, for example, and that bright cap is going to run between you know here and here, then you've still got this pathway to ground here. So it's not quite the same. All right? It's not the same as doing that. Okay, guys, that is a quick run through. I hope this is helpful. Um, if you're either contemplating, you know, doing one of these builds, a Jose style amp, just, you know, just some education, or if you're trying to get some more regression out of your, uh, out of your production amp, you know, there's a couple of, a uh, couple of ideas there to try. Catch you later.